Hello, this is Bad Bob the Astronomer again. I'll just make sure you can see me. Um, I'm just, I am just—I forgot to mention this in the video, the first video, so I may be putting this right on the beginning part of the first video. I wanted to mention that uh, about eight years ago I put ten short videos on YouTube describing how I improved, pardon me, the mosquitoes, uh, how I improved some of the health problems I've had through the years. And uh, those videos are, uh, I think you just have to look up ba Bob's Life video. That's the name of the first one. Uh, I think they go, I'm not sure what the rest of them are, but they'll be there. And they're on my old YouTube channel, which is Anthelpy20. I think you spell it E N T H A L P Y 2 0. I think that's what it is with a capital E at the front. So um, uh, that describes how I used primarily, primarily the Caslo diet method to improve some serious health problems I had. And so uh, I'm sort of using this video in a way to connect my current uh, YouTube channel which is Bad Bob Astronomer so to the old one which is Enthalpy 20 so anyway um, if I sound just not quite normal it's because I'm pretty tired right now I'm just a little bit tired right now that's all it is so anyway I thought I would include this in the first part of the first video and then edit in the rest of or part of the rest of the next video so that's about the way I'll do it you're seeing me in front of my open observatory and you'll see how the telescope functions in a few minutes if I can manage it tonight, I may try and take a video of the planet Saturn right through the eyepiece of my telescope at 400 power, but I'm not sure whether I can manage it or not. It's going to be quite difficult to do it, so I might not be able to do it. So anyway, uh, I'll, 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 um, right now I'm going to move over to the, uh, to the rest of the, next, the first video I made earlier. Here goes. I've got to get up out of this position now to turn this off, which is not easy for an old man. Whoa. There it is. That's as good as I'm going to get it. A video of Saturn at 150 power. Mosquitoes are coming after me pretty bad. I didn't have time to set up the other eyepiece or get the focus or anything. The mosquitoes are just getting me so bad I can't stand it. Zoom it out again to center it. It's still there, but it's a little fainter. It's, Saturn's going behind some trees right now. Mosquito. Hello, this is Bad Bob the Astronomer. Uh, this is July the 10th, 2015, on a really ni fairly nice warm night with almost no wind. It's going to be quite clear. And uh, as you can see, I've got on my best t-shirt, my Albert Einstein t-shirt. I usually wear that only on ceremonial occasions. Um, I thought I would mention off the bat that I uh, have been following the Caslo diet now for 31 years. And if you're interested in, in where to locate that, uh, just go to Amazon.com and uh, put in Arthur Caslow into the search engine. That's K-A-S-L-O-W. And a mosquito, at least swatting mosquitoes, you'll be seeing me doing that. And uh, that will take you to, to where uh, there's some books by him. I think the only book is the, is the one that, that gives the way to do the diet response test. It's uh, freedom from, pardon me, freedom, sorry, freedom from chronic disease. 
by Arthur Caslow. Um, and uh, there's some used copies on right now on Amazon as far as I know. And that's a diet response test that uh, is a fairly effective treatment for a large variety of autoimmune diseases. So anyway, my health is really pretty good now. I have a general overall uh, sense of well-being and I feel better overall than I have in at least 20 years. Uh, my eyesight has improved, my hearing has improved, my sense of smell has improved, but my jokes have not improved. My jokes are still terrible. You may hear the odd one during this video, and some of them are very odd. So anyway, now I'm just going to give you a quick look at my telescope. I've got it all set to go. It's a 20-inch telescope. It's actually of a Gregorian design, named after the Scottish mathematician James Gregory. Uh, and anyway, I've done videos on this before, but I just thought like you'd like to see the telescope as it looks aimed straight up. So here it goes. I'm going to move the camera around, come and get it while the video is still rolling. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm a little bit tired from setting up the uh, setting up the uh, telescope and stuff like that, but here I'll give you some idea of what it's like. There's the mosquito on my arm now. I'm going to whack it. There it goes. I didn't get it very well. Okay, here goes. There's the primary mirror, the mirror saw right there. Uh, I'm just got a panoramic view right up to the top of the telescope tube kind of slowly. I'm not holding this thing very steadily, but YouTube has a method of uh, stabilizing it. There it goes way up to the top of the telescope. The telescope tube is approximately 15 feet long. The whole telescope weighs at least 300 pounds, including the counterweights. There's the top of it. What I'm going to do now is, right now, I'm going to give you a look at the collimation of the telescope with a zoom on. First of all, I'm holding this. This is the eyepiece holder right here of the telescope. I should indicate that right there. That's the eyepiece holder. And I'll, you'll see me put the eyepiece in in a minute. Right now, I'm going to whack this camera down here and zoom in and show you what the collimation is like. There we are. I'll just kind of hold the camera fairly steady against this. You can see that the thing is collimated fairly well. What you're seeing, all those rings there that are showing a little bit of reflection, that, those are the edges of light baffles that go inside the thing. Pardon me, I'm just maneuvering another mosquito off me. And uh, you're looking at an elliptical flat mirror up the length of the tube into the 8-inch Gregorian secondary and then back onto the primary mirror, which reflects light from the sky. So there's three mirrors all together. Right now you're just looking at the sky. I'll get this centered a little better. I, there it goes. Mosquito is getting my elbow, pardon me. I just have to get it. Whoa. This is twilight, eh? Just like it's a lot of mosquitoes around and stuff. It's still recording, yep. I thought I stopped it by accidentally, but I did not. Okay. There it's all centered pretty well right there. So you can sort of see what's going on there. I'll just walk over here and zoom it out back to a wide angle again. You can see the primary mirror, and I think, down in here, sort of. That's aimed in a general direction, the primary mirror right there. Yeah, I think you can see it there. You can see the secondary and stuff like that, but the primary mirror is down there. And I'm going to uh, manipulate this around now. There's the 5-inch uh, finder scope. I don't have the eyepiece in it yet, but that's made with an antique... 5-inch f5 Jaeger's achromatic lens, like that. Pardon me for not holding this very steady. This is a very uh, amateurish video once again. But YouTube has a stabilization feature. There is the equatorial mounting with the setting circles. And there is the clock drive, not the clock drive, but the drive corrector for it. And there is a handle that I use to manipulate it around. And that's, that cloth is wrapped around the handle so that I won't injure myself if I bash my head into it. You can see all the counterweights sort of, uh, whoops, pardon me, the counterweights in various locations. I'll show you some of these massive counterweights right here. Pretty heavy. Those are each big plates, I think, are 25 pounds each. There's some little ones there, too. And there is the finder scope that I made out of uh, uh, approximately 7.5 to 1 zoom telephoto lens that I got on eBay for a small amount of money. I haven't quite got it perfected yet. I'm working on an eyepiece for it that'll actually function with it. This is another ancient finder that I don't use much now, but probably I will get it into use. It's equivalent of an 80 millimeter 
telescope. And there is the uh, looking down the eyepiece, which is not an eyepiece holder for the 5 inch finder. The eyepiece is not in there right now, but it will be soon. Actually, that um, uh, this finder can also double as a rich as a richest field telescope for um, for use at the same time as I'm using the big telescope. So if I want a wide angle view at low power, or especially if I want one with a nebula filter, I can't say to get the whole veil nebula in or something like that. I could do that with this telescope, and it's pretty pretty good. Just take the eyepiece out of the finder and put a, a wide angle eyepiece in with the uh, with the uh, nebula filter in it. And this little device here is a, the, you know, this long device right here attached to the telescope tube is uh, sort of an open open type of finder like uh, a ring sight. There's the bottom ring right there that you can look through. And there's a top ring right up there. I think you can see it up there. I'll kind of zoom in and out a little bit. And those two rings, they're not aimed accurately now, but maybe I'll get them aimed accurately tonight. I did some refurbishing on this a little bit. So you can see how long the thing is. I kind of zoomed out on it a bit. There it goes. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how this telescope sways around a little bit. Whoops, a mosquito on my hand again. But it flew off on its, of its own free will. Whoops, it's still manipulating around. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to fold this telescope down a bit. Whoops, hold on. Mosquitoes are attacking me. While the video is running, I'm just going to grab this handle and kind of let the telescope tube go right down nice and smoothly. You can see that uh, open-ended finder scope. See it kind of going down now? I'm moving it in declination. By the way, the, when you saw that collimated, that was for approximately 34 degrees north of declination, which is about the same declination as the globular star cluster M13, which I hope to view tonight. What I've done just now is move it in declination. Now I'm going to shift it around in right ascension a little bit. You can see it actually shifting over to the left, the whole tube, relative to the background trees and stuff. It's shifting quite a bit in right ascension now. Now I'm going to maneuver it back over a bit. You might be able to see it against the background clouds. I'm going to nice and slowly and smoothly swivel it back in right ascension. I'm going toward the west with the telescope now. Usually, I usually it's right aimed approximately at the southern meridian now, which is where I do most of my observing. I'll swivel it back just a bit more. I do most of my observing as objects cross the southern meridian because that's when they're usually at the greatest altitude above the horizon. And the, the best seeing conditions and the clearest skies are up in that area. So there it is swaying backward again. And a mosquito is getting my arm while I'm doing this. Oh, it's now swimming past the southern meridian a little bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is get myself out of this predicament because I'm down on one knee now and I can't get myself up because I'm old. So I'm going to move this back up again and use the handle to help myself up. And I hear something scraping there, which is not a pleasant sound at all. So you see this maneuvering around as I'm getting, getting myself extricated from this bad position I'm in. There it goes. Whoa. I'm almost back to where I was. I think I'll show you how the collimation changes a little bit. I'm going to manipulate this back down again like so to a lower altitude. There it comes. This is approximately, I'm going to check the setting circle. That is approximately almost down to the celestial equator. Okay, just a little bit above the boat, plus seven, plus eight degrees, something like that, or six degrees. Oops, there's some kind of a fuzz element in there. You see, you pull it out, looks like a bird feather or something that I get in there. Now, I'll show you how the collimation may have changed a little bit. You might not be able to detect it. It's actually pretty good at that altitude. Yeah, the collimation's pretty good still. You can see all the mirrors and that little dark shadow are lined up fairly well. I think one of the light baffles is just out just a little